Well, I'm back again. I'm back again, I'm back again, I'm back again. This time, this time, this Saturday, almost 6 o'clock, this time, the reason why I'm back, I'm back uh, prophetically. I'm back um, uh, to prophetically interpret what's going on, what's happening, what's taking place um, in the spirit, um, what's taking place in the natural. And one of the things uh, that you must understand is that anytime when you see something that happens, when you finally see something that takes place that, that comes, uh, comes to harvest, oftentimes when it's, when it's happened, when it finally happens naturally, it's, it's initially it already happened spiritually. It's already happened spiritually. Like there's a certain breaking. Oftentimes, before the manifestation of something happens physically, it's already some inwardly or spiritually already happened and taken place. Even Jesus, when the, the, he taught the disciples how to pray, he said, thy kingdom, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven. As in, uh, in earth, as it already is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And so um, there's, a, there's a harvest, just like we're planting a seed. Uh, and that seed is a certain period of time where that seed has to grow and, and whatnot. Then once, that, once it's matured, then the stem comes up, then the, the branches come up, then it bears fruit. And the same thing, the same thing. It's what you see now, it eventually started to see form. This has been ha it's done happened a long time ago. When when you see a uh, harvest and we see fruit come up out the ground or fruit come up off the trees, it wasn't planted yesterday. It was planted a while a while ago. So just like when you see people just act crazy and out of, out, out of hand and just out of, just acting in any kind of way, it didn't just happen. It has been building. It is harvest time when you when people show you who they are. There's an old saying that says, believe them. So, but what I want to do, what I want to do, what I want to do, I want to, um, let me turn this. I want to talk about, I want to talk about, there's something, there's something that I, uh, a friend of mine was talking about, heard, heard this one particular message. And so, and, 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 it, and it's something that, that I've been noticing, and it's something that's, that is obvious if you can see it. If you see it in the spirit, and, and what it is, is that the message is, the changing of a God, the changing of power, the changing of authority, just like with, who was it, uh, Saul and David. The people wanted Saul, and so God allowed them to have him. Saul was their king. But while Saul was their king, Saul turned his back on God. He never even prayed to God until the end. Even when he was given instructions to go down to a certain brook or a certain place, and to wait for the priest on what for seven days and he couldn't even wait for the end. And so he he never listened to God. Even even he saw who was it? He saw uh, Samuel when he had died. Uh, 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 he saw a witch to, to 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 bring back Samuel when he had died. Instead of going to God, he went to a witch. And so that one that one the people wanted him. They got him. But then he was brought down. But the thing about it, God gave him chances. He gave him chances. But God had gave him chances. But see, God had, was already raped. And see, that was the people's choice. <coughs> with Saul. See, but while the people had a choice, God was grooming his anointed undercurrent. He was grooming. And, and, and what he was grooming was something that didn't look the part. That wasn't popular. Actually, it was a boy. God was raising up a boy to become ruler, become king, to slay the giant. Someone that they didn't expect or even anticipate that it would be. This is why God says that man looks at the outer appearance, but it's God that looks at the heart. Even David own dad, when it was time to anoint a king in his household, his dad didn't even invite him as a son. To even be worthy of receive his anointing. Even by chance. Even gave not even a thought. But God fixed it so. When, when, when he checked all the brothers. And all the brothers looked good. They were strong. Handsome. But when the oil. When we put the horn, the horn of oil over their head. 
The oil wouldn't wouldn't come. It wouldn't back up. It, it backed up. But then the man of God said, do you have another one? And he said, yeah, I do have one. He's tending sheep. And, and, and then the man of God said, we're going wait, to wait right here until he come. And when he came, that's when the anointing fell. And see what God did, the scripture said God takes the foolishness. Uh, he takes the foolishness of, of preaching to confound those things that are wise. So in other words, what looks stupid to man, God will use the very thing that they look at as pure as being stupid to overcome them. See, because wisdom is too high for a fool. And so, and so in, in this case, what God did, God used a man. God used a boy. God used a boy when the king wouldn't hear God. When he kept on rejecting God, God used a man. And, and after God, he did the final act, when God lifted his, his anointing away from him, then that same anointing greater fell upon David. And so this is the same thing that's happening right now. The same thing that's happening right now. There's a change in. And you just look at it. Just look at it. Now we have a new president. New president. And I, I just want to say, uh, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm not Democrat nor Republican. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus. That's why I vote for it. I vote for Jesus. And, you know, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a, don't lead either way. All I want is justice. And, and, and how I lean, I lean according to how God lead me. And I will say this, um, I will say this, the government and the, government and, and, and the world of system is not of God. God didn't create it. God didn't orchestrate it. But Lucifer, Apollyon, the fallen angel, he's the God of this world system, government. And so Jesus, that's why when Jesus came, Jesus came, he represent a new government. A new order, a new authority. The scripture says, Unto us a child was born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And so, the thing that we need to understand as believers, we need to shift our focus and not focus and get so caught up in that because he even told, uh, even, even, um, um, who was it? Paul even told Timothy, or the Lord even told Timothy, don't get caught up. Uh, it was Timothy, don't get caught up into the affairs of Peter. Don't get caught up into the affairs of the world. Because your reward is coming from the one that you're working for. A soldier. Be a soldier of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, he was keeping them focused. Your focus on the kingdom. Your focus on Jesus, him crucified. Your focus on his power. Your focus on healing. Your focus on breakthrough. Your focus on miracles. And so as believers, we need, to, we need to shift our focus. Our focus is redeeming the time. Our focus is lifting up his name because God said if I, he be lifted up, he will draw all man to himself. So that's why our focus should be. We should get caught up into, into the politics emotionally, but we should, we, should, we should be objective. We should step back. Step back and pray. Step back and observe. You know, and assess. And then however God leads you, then you go in that direction. But Regardless, our job, we're all called to pray. We all, we all called to pray for our country, for our nation. And we're called to pray, not to become divided, but become unified. It's time to pray. And so it was a great fight. Even election day, saying what, you know, what was said and the fight. And even the, the January 6th, what happened? Trying to overtake all that. But it didn't, didn't, didn't pan out. It didn't happen. And then on the 20th, the change happened. And it's interesting because when the change happened, one thing that I noticed, and, I, and it's not nothing about, you know, Democrat or Republican, but the thing that I noticed that when the shift came, even when it came to even the people who were speaking, the, uh, the press secretary or the, 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 the people that, were, that, that that's speaking for the president, all of them seem so calm, seem so relaxed, seem so polished. 
It just seems so different. Seems so different. Like a different spirit, a different mindset, a different way, a different approach. And so, and so that was the shift. You notice it's different. Even when you turn on the TV, when you hear them talk, it's different. When they leave, it's different. Even, even our president, when he talk, he's different. One of the things that I noticed that is almost like he, he seems more natural and he seems more powerful to me when he's not reading the teleprompter. When he's not reading what's, what's you know, of course, you know, he, he knows what's, you know, what's going on, what's happening. But there's a certain guideline you have to speak on certain topics and stuff like that, you know, instead of a certain topic. But when he just speak and just talk, he seemed more drawing, more understanding, more compassionate. And so see, and see, and that is the thing that's been left out, and that is the shift that's taken place. It is more, it was more genuine compassion. It's compassion, more empathy. More concern, more love, and, and so and, and, and see what's interesting because now, if you notice, now that there's a certain figure where it was prophesied and saying this person gonna win, and and now that the person done lost, now the prophets or whoever is there crying and, and 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 trying to deflect, trying to say all kind of stuff, just say I miss God, but see the true form of hip humility and saying that you belong to God is saying I messed up. Humility, forgiveness. That's the true sign that God's spirit really, really, really rests in you is when you when you meant to feel God is sorrowful and not point finger. You can't say you're sorry and still point, well, well, I'm sorry, but well, 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 well you know, I know I'm wrong, but you can't do that. You're not sorry. See, because true repentance is, is a lifestyle, it's it's a mindset. When you turn away from your whole lifestyle, your whole behavior, your whole conversation. See, that's true repentance. A person, you, you didn't repent. If you say you repented, but you're still talking the same way, you're still acting the same way, that's not repentance. You know, rend your heart and not your garment. And so that's what's happening. There is a tearing down. God is pulling down, if you even know in the scripture. Those that even know your Bible, we know that any time when, when there's a change, when there's a change of a God or when there's a new king that's established, that comes in, the first thing, one of the first things that happened, that those half th those half things, those groves, those statues, the things that that king and those people worship come down. That's the first step. That's the first step. Pride goes before a fall. And those and a lot of those images represent a certain pride, a certain image. And those images was brought down. And it was brought down collectively. Be, be, uh, 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 for, uh, because of the people. The people wanted it. But there were certain people that was blocking that from happening. But it did. It did. It failed. Even in scripture, groves and all of that statues failed. During the time of Abraham, statues, Moses, they failed. And when they failed, then God was put in there. Order was put in there. A new order, peace, a, a new regime, a new all of that was put in there. And so that's what's happening now. Things are being fixed and things are being settled. But what's happening also, the enemy is trying to bring confusion, saying, well, disaster is going to happen. Destruction is going to happen. It's almost like it's almost like it's almost like the uh it's almost like the kid that had the ball that's playing basketball. As long as he was picked or playing in the game. We all can play ball. But when he doesn't get picked, he get mad and want to take the ball and stop the game. And so this is what's happening. Because you didn't get picked, you, you got mentalities want to cry and want to take the ball. Want to say everything is wrong because you didn't get your way, so everything is wrong. That's the weed and the terror. If you notice that when the man, the man planted good seeds in the field, but then he went to sleep. But when he went to sleep, the wicked one came and, and planted terror. So you had two good, you got you had two things in the field. You had something that was good and something that's bad. And there's something that something that was bad that was planted there to bring confusion to what was good and to make you to make you believe and trick you to choose what was bad instead of what was good. And then when you took and when you been into or when you partake partook into what was bad and you had that encounter for what was bad 
And so now your testimony is that everything is bad. Ain't nothing is good. And so that's the enemy. That's the enemy. That's the plot of the enemy. That's the plot of the enemy. Our feet that swift the soul mischief, uh, the soul discord. Uh, because you didn't get your way. God forbid. God, that's something that God hates. When a person willfully, because you didn't get your way, trying to bring division, trying to, to bring confusion, to, to, to stop and, and try to block God people from unifying into the truth. That stuff like that will bring judgment. That brings judgment. Anytime someone gets in the way of God's plan and, and gets in the way of God's people and try to break, become a stumbling block or become a hindrance of something that gets in between, in between them and God or their understanding of the truth. God said, when you've done it unto the least of mine, it is the same as doing unto me. So those are my words. Those are my words. There's a changing. And if you notice that any time the, the end of something, there is a horrible fight. Because the reason why there's a horrible fight, because it doesn't want to let go. That's why I'll admit your lives. That's why there's so much warfare in your lives. Because the warfare and those strongholds in your life, they don't want to let go. And so because they don't want to let go, they're going to hold on and hold on and hold on and ride and ride and ride until, 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 until it gets its way. And if it don't get its way, it's going to just hold on and hold on and, and put its claws in you and leave marks on you. And see, that's what the enemy does. The enemy gets so deep into you, try to leave marks on what let you go. If it's it going to let you go, it's going to, going to try to punish you, going to try to uh, torment you. But you got to break his hand, break his nails, break her nails, resist the devil. And he will flee. And she, whoever it is, whoever it is, got to flee. In the mighty name of Jesus, got to flee. Every sound, every crafty sound, every lurking voice, every, every creeping, every, every peeping tongue, every, every blind bat, every hateful dog, every crooked wizard, Every blind, every blind and smooth talking salesman, whoever and whatever, whatever kind of form, whatever kind of shape of angle you might come in, I just want to present to you the blood of Jesus has been applied against you, which means that you are the defeated foe. That means that you must bow to the authority in the name of God. Because at the name of Jesus, in the earth, every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that he is Lord. And so as God arise, as his power arise, wickedness must be bowed down. And wickedness must come in, come in order and decease. In Jesus' name, let God arise and let every enemy scatter. And scatter to the swine, scatter to the ocean, scatter to the abyss. In the mighty name of Jesus, loose your hand and let them go. Let their mind go. Let their emotions go. Let their thoughts go. Let their ways go. Let their walk go. Let their talk go. Let their imagination go. Let their dream world go. Uh, let, let, let everything about them go in the mighty name of Jesus. We lose hooks in your jaws. We beat back every force and we beat back every sound. We beat back every, every 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 frequency. We beat back every tune, every station, every channel that you would try to come through. And we render you helpless right now. For the axe head is laid at the root. The axe head, the word, the holy writ God word is speaking to you now. Against you, Lord God, Satan rebukes you, beats you. In Jesus' name, God bless your people. God bless your name by name. God bless them that want to be blessed. God open up. God even bless them even in a greater way. God give them a devil portion blessing. God give them a blessing with wisdom. God give them a blessing with joy. God give them a blessing abundantly. God give them a new blessing. God give them a great blessing. God calls their blessing to spring up. God calls their blessing to expand. God calls their blessing to come in waves. God calls their blessing to fall in their life like dominoes. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. God break every prison gate. God calls, a, God calls an earthquake to come to every gate. Every, every gate of a prison of oppression. 
and cause every gate to swing open. And God calls them to become free. Mind, body, soul, and spirit in Jesus' name. Amen.